What's up everyone? It's Ruby here. Bring you guys another video. So today we're talking about a kind of new topic surfacing around ever since like Warner Brothers dropped Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, there's been talk about what we would want to see as DLC. Now there's no plans for DLC right now. That's probably because they're still working on porting to the old generations as well as um, fixing the current game as it is because there are some bugs every once in a while. So they're probably working on that more than other DLC because they're actually a good company who cares about having complete games that are playable and not broken. <laughs> But, down the line, say 2024, 2025, or even 2030, there could be Hogwarts Legacy DLC. Or, there could be also be sequels and, so, and spin-offs and so on. But we're going to just focus on the question of DLC. Because I definitely have some ideas on how we can expand on Hogwarts Legacy. Even though it is really good, I definitely think there are some areas where it could be improved. Now, I know there is different types of discussions going around, but these are my ideas of what a good DLC would look like. The first one that I have in mind is Dementors and Azkaban. We've already been kind of teased this a little bit through the Hufflepuff branch, spoiler alert. If you are a Hufflepuff and you will eventually go to Azkaban uh, for a quest. And this allows us to meet some of the Dementors in Harry Potter. Well, in the Harry Potter world, I should say, in the Wizarding world. But this would be a perfect opportunity to expand and allow all of the characters, all four characters, Hogwarts, sorry, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Slytherin, and Hufflepuff, to all go to Azkaban. Let's say you curse, you cast an unforgivable curse. Or let's say you want to visit <laughs> Sebastian when it goes to ask Man for killing his eye. Oh, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you already played the game. To be honest, that's my assumption. But yes, I definitely think that the Dementors and Ask Man are a natural introduction to what is next. Because the Dementors could add another element to the game specifically the Patronus Charm. Now there is the question of whether or not there should be forms because, um, you know, in, the, in Harry Potter, there is the ability to turn your Patronus into an animal. You don't really turn it into an animal, it just becomes one because you are so powerful. However, that's not always the case. You can still be a powerful wizard and not take the have your their patronus charm take the form of an animal now what they could do is tie it tie it into the uh Potomer quiz and everything i mean that's what they would have to do in order for it to really work for each individual person but the problem is the problem is that the possibility of there being there is a possibility of there being like 20 or 30 different animal forms for the Patronus. Because there, there's a big list of animals that you can get on the quiz if you so desire. They're rare, but they are possible. And some people do have those forms as Patronuses. So really the question would be whether it would be doable to put into the game. And I think this is also probably a debate the developers themselves had while making this game. Can we even include the Patronus Charm? And I think the answer is yes, you just don't include the corporeal version. Because I think that it is arguable that we, as a fifth year, fourth year student, whatever year we are, I think fifth year? Fifth year. Oh, yeah, fifth year. As a fifth year student, it would be arguable that we're not powerful enough to conjure a an animal. Um, that or you force the in-game decision of choosing your Patronus, which would be kind of weird because you don't really choose your Patronus, it just it, it just happens. 
Um, so I don't know if that would necessarily be something that they want in implement, but then again, the wand is also supposed to choose you and you can customize your wand and the, and the, the, the hat is supposed to decide which house you're in, but you can choose that as well. So, I mean, it's not that far of a stretch for you to be able to customize what your patrons will look like. Maybe if you reach a certain level, maybe that, that could be like a perk or a talent introduced where your, um... Your Patronus could take the form of an animal, and you could choose between, like, maybe just five or ten. I mean, maybe they could do twenty different versions of the Patronus. Maybe just keep it generic, because there are a lot of, like, birds and, and, and like, fish. <laughs> There's a lot of different birds, so maybe they can narrow it down to, like, a couple of birds, a couple of, like, 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 uh, big cats, maybe a little cat, <laughs> dogs, a couple of dogs, like... Or maybe you can make it just a little bit more generic, um, because I feel like I feel like people will be happy if the Patronus is even included. That it wouldn't really matter if the Patronus matched what they got in the quiz. I don't think they have to implement every single one, and I I think that you can have a couple that are really really cool and still unique to the experience. So I don't think that they would have to really customize it that much, although they could very well do so. Uh, and maybe that was kind of one of the challenges and the debates that they had while thinking about putting this into the game. If they even thought about putting this into the game. Um, I think now, you know, there's no real reason for them to include the Patronus Charm because there's no Dementors roaming free. But if there's a scenario that is introduced, like for example, we are a dark wizard, maybe the, maybe the Dementors do come uh, and maybe we do have to fight them in order to stay free. Maybe we have to escape Azkaban. Maybe we're wrongfully sentenced. And that kind of brings it all into kind of my next idea for a DLC. And this one kind of happens naturally, just like the Dementors. It's already kind of in the game. It just isn't implemented. And I have the perfect way of introducing this. Now, some people were saying that it should be the Triwizard Tournament. But the problem with the Triwizard Tournament is it's too big. I don't think it would work, but what would work, what would work is the Quidditch World Cup. There was already kind of a tease of the Quidditch World Cup because um, the Ko Kagawa, is that her name? Kagawa? Uh, talked about a, a specific Quidditch team and referenced them. Uh, and so what we could do is introduce the idea of the Quidditch World Cup, where we would attend the Quidditch World Cup and be able to cheer and bet and uh, see Quidditch in action without necessarily having to play the actual game. And in fact, this could actually be a reason to introduce the idea of to reintroduce Quidditch into the Harry Potter game, in, into, into a Hogwarts Legacy, right? Because if Quidditch World Cup exists and we're able to go and see how the Quidditch is played, maybe we could have like some like small little games in um, at Hogwarts. Uh, maybe Black would be a little bit more open to the idea of reintroducing the Quidditch World Cup after we finished the. It's not the Quidditch World Cup. Just Quidditch in general. Uh, maybe not have like a House Cup. Maybe not have like the big tournament, but be able to. Uh, allow us to be able to play the game like it was supposed to be played. Or at least some version of it. It doesn't have to be the full Quidditch game, but I do think that there are ways to implement Quidditch into this game. I think I think the reason why it feels kind of off is because, well, we don't get to actually see Quidditch in action. I feel like that's what most people want. Obviously, if we're able to play it, that'd be great. But I think being able to spectate it would be just as fine, and I think you'll be able to do it in a way where it feels still unique because you would be able to participate in the event itself maybe you pay some gold for the tickets um and it would just be like a little fun thing to do uh after the game is over because i feel like this is something that would happen after the main story everything is wrapped up and now you get to go to the quidditch world cup that is now taking place after the school year is over that makes sense because the quidditch world cup usually happens during the summer and when Hogwarts is not in session. So you'd be able to go to the Quidditch World Cup and be able to see Quidditch in action. And maybe you would have some comments from the NPCs who are bummed that they can't play Quidditch at Hogwarts. Um, 
and you would be able to kind of interact with them and kind of express your your sadness that Quidditch isn't uh, allowed on Hogwarts grounds uh, and be able to kind of have that dialogue at least to please you. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to implement Quidditch into the actual game. I think it would be a little bit more difficult and I don't know if there's necessarily plans to do so. But I think this is a, I think this is a good middle ground. Uh, I think that this it just makes sense, and I think and I think this would be the easiest way to do it. And then, of course, because we have bad wizards, we need the Ministry of Magic. I think being able to visit the Ministry of Magic maybe Fig takes us. Oh wait, maybe not. Um, <laughs> Maybe somebody takes us to the Ministry of Magic. Maybe we have to have a trial because we killed too many people. Maybe we use the Unforgivable Curse and we have to have a hearing about everything <laughs> that we did. Uh, or maybe they just want to know about the events that happened during the game, during the main quest, and now we have to go to the Ministry of Magic and figure out what's going on there. Maybe we are even in potential for becoming an aura or um, an aura. Or, or, or like an unspeakable like we have mentions of sort of the ministry of magic itself and there's even a canon uh, minister of magic that is found within the game just through the little notes and everything so being able to meet them in reality would be really interesting and i think it would really add to the whole experience of having the wizarding world in this game and being able to explore the wizarding world uh, maybe it would be something that you would travel to off-world, like you had the world map, but then you have the, the even bigger map. Uh, and I definitely think that this would be 100% doable. And then next, we would have Diagon Alley. We have not been able to do Diagon Alley because um, Hogsmeade. Hogsmeade is where we got the supplies. But we have not been able to see Diagon Alley in the Leaky Cauldron. I think being able to kind of see the, the beginnings of Diagon Alley, because obviously, you know, it's 100, 100 years before Harry Potter. So this would not be the, what it looks like. like. This this stuff would not be how it looks like right now. But we would be able to see some version of Diagon Alley and be able to kind of experience that as a Hogwarts and a Harry Potter fan. Uh, you would be able to go to the different shops, be able to maybe even sell different things, maybe even be able to get a few different objects, um, and maybe even go to Gringotts, be able to start a bank account. <laughs> uh, but I think I think just being able to experience Diagon Alley would be a really fun thing to do. Um, Although, I don't really know if there's a reason to include Diagon Alley, uh, especially since Hogsmeade kind of fills that void. But I'm sure there could be a reason as to why we have to go. Maybe we just need unique supplies that can't be found in Hogsmeade, although, then again, why would we? Uh, but we would be able to introduce maybe Borgen and Burks and uh, Doc Turner Alley. And maybe, maybe, maybe even one of our friends takes us to Diagon Alley. Like maybe we go with Sebastian, or maybe we go with Nadi, Nazi, Natty, <laughs> and maybe we go with Poppy, or even Amelda. And maybe someone just introduces us to Diagon Alley. Just an idea. Uh, also, maybe just a Hogsmeade expansion in general, because I know there's some stores that we can't really interact with, like Zonko. Zonko's we can't really, like, buy pranks. It'd be, be kind of funny if we were able to, like, buy different pranks and then use them on different students and be able to interact with them more. Because right now, you know, there's a lot of students that we can't interact with, but it would be able... But, in, but it would be fun to be able to kind of, like, mess with them a little bit. And then, we have the Black Lake. I think that it is great that we even see the Kraken, not the Kraken, the giant squid in the Black Lake. But what if we could actually go underwater? Now, I understand why they wouldn't include underwater in the game yet. Yeah, obviously, this world is very expensive, and including an underworld, including an underwater uh, adventure would be a lot more consuming and a lot and take a lot more time and be have to be a lot more detailed but i think having black lake experience would be very interesting because there's many creatures under the water 
and we would be able to introduce Gillyweed. We, we would be able to, to have like our own little like exploration. Maybe we get like a little scuba dive. Maybe we do a little bubble charm and just have like different reasons as to why we would want to be in the Black Lake in the first place. I don't know why we would want to go to Black Lake. But just uh, just an expansion. <laughs> I mean, we can already go to Black Lake now, I guess so. I guess, but uh, it'd be interesting to be able to go into the Black Lake and be able to kind of see like, the little gremlins that are underneath the water and even be introduced to the mermaids that are there. The merfolk. And the mer people. And then I think there should be a dueling expansion. I think a little a little dueling club expansion. I know that there's cross wands, but you only have like three rounds of that. And I think there should be like one of those it's basically like the um the dark arts version. Right? We had the little dark arts version, but it would be nice if we had like be a, we would be able to challenge the like, different people within the school. We'd be able to challenge Sebastian, we'd be able to challenge Nati, we'd be able to challenge Poppy and the other annoying people that we don't like. Like, it would be very interesting to be able to challenge them to a duel and be able to fight them and maybe even potentially kill them. <laughs> maybe not kill them. Maybe no, 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 no unforgivable curses, maybe. Maybe. Or maybe we could. <laughs> It'd just be a fun, I think it would be a little fun addition. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be anything huge. It's just a little dueling club expansion. Maybe even after everything takes place, you have all the spells unlocked. And now you can do basically cross wands 2.0, where now you have the dueling club. And it gives you something to do outside of just wandering around the, the world. So it just gives you a little extra to do after the main story is finished. And that is, those are my, so those are my ideas of what a good Hogwarts Legacy DLC would look like. What would you want to see added to the game? What would you want to see as, uh, as DLC? Which of my ideas do you like the most? And yeah, comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out guys. It's been a blast. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.